Hey, Greg is Greg is talking to the mini grass. We're gonna get a relay here. Greg's on the solid state tonight. Greg's on the solid state tonight. When communication counts, you can count on Realistic. The sale priced Realistic CP. Only at Radio Shack. A candy company. We introduced our Realistic CB line way back in 1960. Radio Shack also makes its own CB antennas, crystals, coax cables, and accessories. Equip your car, truck, or boat today with a Realistic CB radio. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. Hi guys, Greg Howe, S9 Radio here, and I've been into radio for a long, long time. And throughout that period, I've collected some really nice performing, great looking radios, and the Realistic Navajo Pro Series is certainly no exception. Now let's do a quick radio rewind. Keep in mind, we're transitioning away from the vacuum tube era into solid state technology with many of the 60s vintage radios having that industrial utilitarian look Oftentimes, manufacturers would just cut a hole in the front panel, jam a meter in there that might or might not be illuminated. And many of these radios found their homes in the garage, in the basement, but certainly not as a showpiece in most households. And that was all about to change. The 11 meter CB radio technology was now firmly cemented as a piece of American culture with manufacturers not just focused on performance, but now taking a harder look at the aesthetics and the eye appeal in an attempt to bring these out of the garages, out of the basements and into the forefront of household living quarters. And the Navajo Pro series certainly didn't disappoint with this beautiful wood grain wrap with aluminum trim, We've got an aluminum extruded front panel highlighting the majority of the controls. We've got this beautiful illuminated multicolor, multifunction S meter, this fancy on-air modulation light, and a host of other features. As a matter of fact, Radio Shack termed this a full featured radio meaning all crystals providing 23 channel coverage was included. Of course, we've got the priority sub receiver, and then we've got a rather cutting edge technology for the newer solid state radios, an FET, a field effect transistor front end. These were highly sensitive transistors, really boosting the received sensitivity. And then of course, the implementation of integrated circuits, also something that was really cutting edge technology back in the day. And then continuing on with this full feature design, we've got a nice front panel mounted headphone jack, a built-in SWR meter, a delta tune that shifts the receiver frequency plus or minus 700 hertz, and then an adjustable noise blanker that Radio Shack calls a silencer. And then of course, we've got the squelch with the PA switch and the volume on off control. And like many of the early 70s offerings from Japan, they used a five pin DIN plug. So right now, the Navajo Pro is acting as a straight 23-channel radio controlled by the channel selector here. And then coming over here to the priority, as soon as I turn this on and it senses activity on the priority channel, it gives us a light. Now, taking it one step further, the priority circuitry is now fully engaged. And even though I'm monitoring channel 11, should any activity come along on the sub receiver, it will automatically switch the receiver from channel 11 over to whatever frequency is installed here. And then taking it one step further, one can press this button for transmit. You'll see it blanks out the channel display, letting you know you're fully engaged using the channel priority circuitry.
Okay, let's see what makes these Navajo Pros tick. Well, having a look at the rear apron, you'll see we've got a multi-connector here that provides both an AC or a DC input. We've got a quarter inch phono jack for the external PA speaker and also another quarter inch phono jack for the external radio speaker. And of course, the SO239 for the antenna connector. You'll also notice we've got some nice ventilation here. And let's have a look at the inside. We've got a nicely shielded power transformer here, a rather large 4,000 microfarad DC filter capacitor. And overall, a really nice layout, a front firing speaker. Um, notice the uh, light bulbs are easy to service. And then you've got the traditional 455 kilohertz IF strip here with one mechanical filter. And then here's the subreceiver IF strip. This is a 255 kilohertz IF strip. You'll see it's got different size IF cans, and that's for the subreceiver. And then there's a few extra transmitter components over here. Now, here's where things get interesting. I've always thought of Radio Shack being somewhat conservative, and look what we've got here. We've got two 25-watt audio transistors in a push-pull configuration, and theoretically, the two of them could drive this modulation transformer with almost 50 watts of audio, which of course is floated across this final. And this is a 10-watt maximum output device in a TO66 package. However, I don't believe the power supply in its stock form is capable of doing this as it uses Zener shunt regulators. But interestingly enough, what we've got here, we've got these holes right here. Now these holes weren't by accident and they're certainly not for ventilation. I'm speculating that these holes were for a TL3 pass element voltage regulator transistor. And this power transformer that looks to be three, maybe five amps maximum, it certainly wouldn't warrant having two pass element voltage regulator transistors. One would be more than ample, which would lead one to believe perhaps this second set of holes was for a larger final. Now, why would Radio Shack engineers have left provisions for two extra high power transistors? I'm speculating that Realistic Tandy Corporation was probably petitioning the FCC. It was, it was kind of an unwritten rule that Channel 9 emergency react monitors could use whatever power level required to facilitate emergency communications. And by pressing this button here, one could easily bump up the power level to 30 watts or so. And only on channel nine, as you can see, it disables the regular 23 channels. So perhaps this was going to be an option for React monitors to bump up their power at the press of a button. Once again, this is just speculation, but after a closer examination of the Channel 9 priority circuitry, we've got extra poles on the relay, we've got some jumpers, and it looks like this circuitry could easily be reconfigured to do such a thing, having 25, 30 watts available at the press of a button when on Channel 9. Now, for those of you wondering about the overall performance of the Realistic Navajo Pro series, it just wouldn't be fair to do that right now as this radio is completely virgin with the 50-year-old electrolytic capacitors. I want to get those replaced. I'll follow that up with the precision alignment, and then we can talk about performance. However, even with the 50-year-old capacitors, the locals tell me the transmitter's got some serious audio, and the receiver is definitely on par with top-shelf radios of the early 70s era. I should also say there's a darn good chance I'm going to hot rod one of these Navajo Pros by upgrading the power supply circuit, installing a large voltage regulator transistor, allowing me to open up the modulator circuit. In doing so, I'm going to drop the dead key to darn near zero, upping the modulation a little bit, and we'll take that signal and feed a high power RF final, and I expect some serious swing in this thing. Anyway, stay tuned for part two, 73, Greg, S9 Radio, aka WikiWack, Big Bear Mountain SoCal.